Hey Yoginis. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about Trikonasana, aka triangle pose. Um, I like to call it three dimensional pose because there are in fact so many angles in this pose and the angles in fact don't stay on the side plane. So triangle at first glance may simply look like a side plane movement but there's a lot more going on in the center of the body which i want to explain so i want to give you some advice that isn't just the obvious advice for triangle pose so many of us do this pose from maybe our first class so sometimes it's a uh, brushed over in class um, you might sit in beginner and advanced classes alike and most likely different types of flow class. Now because it's featured all the time it doesn't really get a lot of attention. You might simply just be told do triangle pose or we're in triangle pose and that's it and it doesn't really get worked. So um, the danger of that is that your triangle pose might never evolve from day one. So I see students that have been doing triangle pose for years and they're very happy with the triangle pose and they may be up here yeah or here or just hovering off the floor and they feel the work we all know that it works the waist obviously you're suspending your torso without support or so much support over a leg so you feel the work in the torso and the leg but perhaps there's not a lot of grounding or energetic work going on so the danger of this one is that it becomes more of a clingy, grabby, I almost call it a power pose, a bit like a plank where you're, you know, holding, holding yourself taut. So that's one of my little peeves with triangle pose, that people don't get that beautiful uh, solidity and perfect balance to really enjoy the posture. So I've discussed that we know it works the waist, and the legs. Another obvious point is that it opens the chest through the arms. So these aren't really my focuses for this class. Um, my focus is going to be the entry to it, how you set up the posture. Because often this is done, I want to say incorrectly, but it sounds like a really bad word, inappropriately. And by doing that, you miss out, as I've said, on the real benefits of the pose. So um, why do we want a perfect pose? Um, we want a perfect pose for our individual body so that we can relax in the posture. So we're not seeking more or seeking less. So we can find that sweet middle part where we're grounded and stable so we can relax the breath and the mind and then truly feel the posture and of course reap the benefits, right? So um, if you look at Yoga Mala, uh, Atabi Joyce's book on Ashtanga Yoga, I'm going to be talking about this triangle pose. So it's probably the most common used triangle pose. There's also another one in the Shivananda tradition, which is more of a side bend. So we're looking at this one. So in here, the stance, next we're going to talk about the stance, says to step the feet three feet apart, right? So it's probably about this far apart. Now I've gone ahead being a seamstress, taken the tape measure <laughs> and three feet, you'll be surprised to know, I can't remember if it was 36 or 38, I think it was 36 inches, right? That is longer than my leg. My leg is about 32 inches. So this one measurement isn't going to work for everyone. If your stance is too long for your body length and your leg length, it's going to feel different and work different as is if the posture is too short, okay? Too short might mean you don't get enough work, too long might mean you get 
too much work. So my advice is, I heard this, I think it was from Kino McGregor, so thank you. The length of your stance is the length of your leg. So triangle pose is not about making the perfect geometric shape with your limbs. It might look that way, it might be really pleasing to perform it that way, i.e. I have a triangle between the legs, a triangle between the front leg, the torso and the arm, and perhaps another triangle from this top hand to the back hip to the shoulder. Maybe there's another triangle here from the head and the eyes to the hand. So a lot of people get fixated on the idea that this front foot, this shoulder, this arm have to be in a straight line. And this is where a lot of people miss out on doing the appropriate triangle pose. So I can get away with this because of my proportions. I can quite neatly make straight lines across the whole of my triangle, right? If you are longer in your leg, perhaps shorter in your body, and you try to do this, you might not be able to make this shape. Your head might not get anywhere near the, the reach of that foot, in which case this hand's gonna have to come out of its straight line and go over there, yeah? So that would be your triangle. This is how you see Sharaf performing it here. He has longer limbs. His arms are not in a straight line, do you see? Uh-huh. So his shoulder would be more in line with his heel if he went straight down. So you're allowed to do that, yogis. You don't have to be in straight lines. When people realize that they can't make this straight line here, what they often do is shorten the stance of the posture way too short, and they end up looking like they're on stilts. I see this a lot. Maybe you don't hear sometimes. I've seen teachers like this. This is how they do their trikonasana. Long-legged teachers want to get the shoulder above the foot, they make a shorter body, longer legs. So they end up here <laughs> in this tiny little trikonasana, which is more spindly and less stable. It might feel really good, I'm not saying it doesn't feel good. There's a lot of work for your back hip, but it's supposed to be more stable than this. If you have long legs, why not try placing the hand here? Yeah, he says you've got to even reach the toe. But take the stance of your leg length to be stable. So that's the stance that was bothering me. Got that off my chest. Um, another one is the hip action. So uh, the back hip should be working in this posture. If you're new to the posture, maybe you were taught to have the back foot at a diagonal, facing forward, perfectly fine. So now this back hip is pointing forward with us in the pose, perfectly fine for a beginner. But eventually this back hip starts to open and the toe will point out to the front or the side, whichever you feel is appropriate to your knowledge. So this hip is going that way. So a lot of people do triangle pose for years without opening the back hip. Yeah, so again, let's look at the picture. You can see his front knee is pointing forwards, as is the rest of his thigh and his hip. So we all know not to let this knee fall in. That's quite a common um, cue to receive. And then the back knee is pointing this way, yeah? as is the thigh, as is the hip. So you might be asking, which way are the hips facing? Hmm. So I remember being a new teacher um, with another teacher on a yoga retreat and we were discussing endlessly, what the hell are the hips doing in triangle pose? <laughs> They're neither facing forwards with the front leg, as they would in say Parjvaltanasana or with the reverse triangle, yeah because the back hip is opening, but they're neither pointing to the side like this, as they would in Warrior Two, for example. Uh -huh, this is where it gets super cool. So the 3D part of the triangle is that your front femur goes one way, your back femur goes another way, and your hips are slanting and dipping, if you will, 
to enable that to happen. So this might explain why a lot of people stay here forever. They haven't grasped the fact that the front hip goes back and down. Good. I think I checked this right. Antroversion. Okay. Tipping the pelvis forward and the back hip goes up and behind, pulling the pelvis backwards. Okay. Antroversion, retroversion. So the pelvis is coming down and going up and on an angle. It's pretty cool. If you could see an x-ray version of me, I'm sure it would really help you to understand that. But this is the main thing we need to be focused on after the feet are correct. Allowing the hip to go back, allowing the back hip to go up, and opening. Then you can work your waist and your wingspan. So I think that's all I had to say about Trikonasana, the wonderful pose, maybe the best pose of all, said to me way more than a fundamental pose. I'm sure I had more to say on this, but um, ask me your questions if you have any. And to finish, I'm going to treat you and give you a version of Trikonasana from Shivatsa Ramaswamy, who was uh, one of Krishnamacharya's students later in his life. And if you look at her feet, I was like, whoa, what's she doing with those feet? So this is before we uh, made triangle pose perfect and westernized, if you like, and geometric with all these perfect angles. This book says simply, stand with the feet facing out to allow for natural hip rotation. So this is a teacher who recognizes that most people's hips swing outwards slightly. When we stand, there's usually a slight rotation out. So a natural triangle stance. This is what I've started calling it in my classes. Much easier, we simply spread the arms and waist, place the right hand down inside the front foot. No need to worry about where your hips and your pelvis are going. So this <laughs> is my latest way of varying my triangles, which I use especially in beginners classes. And also when I start to get, I don't know if you heard that then, a click in my hip. So triangle pose can create compression, this is the last thing I'll add, in your hip. You're putting your weight in your hip and it's a pretty funny angle to be working. So one way is to imagine lifting up and over the hip each time you bend over a hip, especially useful in Uttanasana, teach it this way. But another thing might be just to avoid Trikonasana for a while, the standard version, and just take this really nice, simple version. You can also do your twisted triangles here. All right, guys, happy triangling. <laughs>